Paul Gresko a slob and a muppet? What's happening on Stall Talk right now? Junior hockey is like having a mullet. You can't just do it. It's a fucking lifestyle. So live it up while you can, boys. <laughs> yeah, it's Chucky Slick. Straight out of the gnaw. The song is for all you beauties out there living the dream. Whether you're first line or fourth line. Why not just create a Junior B with these teams that can't play in Junior A? It's that easy. The lifestyle. Feel me. I'm yeah, sorry. I live a normal life until I started playing juniors. Moved away from home and now my bill and mom's a cougar. My roommate is a beauty. Please excuse my hockey. I thought you were fucking dead this morning. I am deadly ass sewer and I'm here for the memories. Gino's apples rarely get in penalties. Shout out to the fourth line. Welcome back, everybody, to Stall Talk. This is episode 51, presented by Apex Learning. A lot of smart people over there at Apex Learning. If you're a junior hockey player or parent, please go check them out on their website. Um, They offer online classes, so you're not getting behind while you are probably struggling on the ice at the Tier 3, Tier 2, or Tier 1 level. Today, I am joined by my good friend, Polly, as always. We've got a we've got another guest in the third chair. We we scratched Gresco yet again. This is the second time in would this be three weeks or two weeks, Paul? Three, three weeks. Second yep. time, second in, three time weeks. in three weeks. Yep. He's on the bench. This one is definitely not a healthy scratch. This is just based off performance alone. Gresco is out, and we got Costo back in on the chair. He's a recurring guest. It's probably four or five for him. Um the only person that's ever been suspended by stall talk. So Costa, how you doing? Hey, not too shabby boys. Good to be back. Uh, as always, it's a, it's an absolute treat to be here. Um, yeah. What can I say? Uh, good to be back off the suspy. I think I had, was I back one time and this is my, uh, this is my second shift back, uh, after the suspy. So it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're I not going to so. get I... you to say any degrading shit this time, so you should be safe. <laughs> uh, you shouldn't have to put your foot in your mouth this time, so I think all's good now. Well, and the beauty of it is now it's it's just me and Polly's podcast because Gresco can't seem to show up for um, a recording, and Anything. so we make the calls on suspensions. Who knows? He might be getting the second ever suspension. Yeah, and, and like the best part about that suspension is that the – only way he'll know is Rainer will just send him an audio file like right. he won't t- and he'll listen to it and find out in the first sentence of that audio podcast when he edits it that he is now suspended from the podcast which well, like, actually if that happens that's what happens this far along actually i don't think he would actually be listening by this time yeah. that's true you know, you know what's funny too is like technically if i was still su- or uh still suspended um, it wouldn't even matter because now it's the hockey focus group. So that's um, true. <laughs> just a completely different title in itself. So that would be fantastic if that I was is. suspended and hopped on. That's true. Suspension lifts when organization moves. So yeah, exactly. yeah your suspension, like your suspension stayed in Butte. You can't, you can't get suspended in Minnesota. That's just, that yeah. doesn't, that doesn't happen. It's like being suspended in the WHA and yeah. then transferred over to the NHL or something. Yeah. Again. Yeah. That that's like getting suspended in the Western States. Like the, the yeah. rules just don't count. So like, no, there's no record that it even exists. Yeah. Exactly. It's like the one kid in the USPHL that punched the ref last year. He's definitely going to find a home in like the GMHL. No. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh yeah i mean probably with the old omaha owner if that's the route that they're going yeah this this would be like the coach like he a uh, coach would find him on facebook he's just love the grit love the energy kid you're uh you're a uh, play for free kind of kid and hard <laughs> to say I, hard to say i didn't like the grit it was just in the wrong way yeah yeah the effort needs to be you can definitely say he played on the edge you know yeah. <laughs> tip, tip the line. <laughs> Sean Avery did. <laughs> but Paul, you played golf tonight. How'd it go? It was all right. Um, made a couple birdies, which is really all that I'm looking for. Trying to trying to figure out the driver a little bit. Yep. Um, but yeah, it was good. It was uh a little slow out there as uh golf courses tend to be um after COVID. So that's great. We love that. But other than that, it was yeah, it was a good night. I'm uh I'm playing in a tournament tomorrow. Ooh, you nervous? I'm a, I, yeah, I mean there's going to be a bunch of people around. I've never seen the course before and my driver 
I've lost it. I've lost control of it. I've I lost mean... absolute control. I, I finally got myself to a place where, I mean, I probably hit eight fairways my last round of golf. But it's literally like just squeezing it down and getting 200 max out of it and just trying <laughs> to like baby it to the middle or else the the miss is either like low left hard or high hard right. So I don't know what's going on. Um, flying in a, a it's, it's going to be sort of a networking event for me as well. Um, so I really don't want to hit anyone in the head. Um, and so that's my biggest concern going into tomorrow. Um my hybrids off the map as well. My five irons not to be seen, but I mean, if you give me like four out of my 14 clubs in my bag, I feel very confident about my game right now. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you can list 11 things that you're terrified of and then be like, yeah, my biggest concern is just eight. This is this, this, and this, yeah. like, I don't know if that's how biggest concerns work, but, they're I all, I mean, glad, they're all just a massive I'm concern. glad that going all into of my this game. Thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad because oftentimes you have played with me and you have felt like you are going to light it up. And even those rounds have a tendency to like be on that line sometimes. And so yeah. if you're sitting here going to tell me that you are, you're already concerned about it, I, I'll be honest, I don't have high hopes for that group tomorrow. Yeah, I, I will say like, and we talked about this a few weeks ago. I think this is just growing pains in the, the long-term effect of my golf game where I am starting to get better, significantly better than what I was. And so now that I'm starting to learn to play the game of golf a little bit better, it's almost like kind of baby steps again where, I mean, before, like, you know me, I'm scared of the ground. I'm taking massive divots now. Like, I'm hitting the ball Div well. Divots, it feels divots fantastic. are fantastic. Cool. It feels fantastic. It's just putting it all together and not hurting any one person, woman, man, or child is my biggest concern going into tomorrow. But I am getting better. It's just a work in progress to kind of keep keep grinding and keep getting better. Well, so I know you said this is a networking event. And you've never seen the course. What are, what are the chances you purposefully or accidentally just get absolutely buckled because your golf game just falls off the wagon? What if um, your golf game and you both just absolutely go off the wagon and just guzzle beers and bogeys like it's your day job? I'm, I'm you know, I, I want to say purposefully like 0%, but that would be a lie to all of the stock stall talk listeners and to you both. And I don't want to do that. I would say there's a 30% chance I do it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to give myself the better of the benefit of the doubt a little bit. I'm going to go 60% chance on accident that it happens. See, I was going to see, I was going to say is that like, if you don't give the on accident seat, like percentage way higher, I don't know if I can like take your numbers seriously because the uh, on accident networking, I mean, yeah, no, it's a, it's a big concern. Thankfully they're serving lunch before we tee off, but I mean, a deli sandwich and a bag of chips can only go a long way to counteract the effects of some nickel bobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that in this situation will combat the effects of nickel bobs. I think nerves will combat a nickel bob or two. Um, playing golf combat some nickel bob or two some sandwiches now i mean we're already talking about six or seven beers deep that you're clear on <laughs> yeah, it's true it's true yeah, do you um, know who you're partnered um, with uh and cart wise by the way tomorrow oh, cart cartners you're yeah. having a good I, partner matters i yeah. do i have i have maybe the best partner of all time um it does also happen to be uh maddie's mother oh so that's for sure you get to so, go with yep oh, that's yep good. and i think I think we were one of the last groups to fill in. And so I, I really hoping I checked two days ago, we were just the twosome. So we're going to be just the two of us. Everyone else is going to be in groups of four, obviously. So I'm really hoping we don't have anyone else grouped with us. Cause that will make things a little bit even more dicey. Yeah. I, yeah. I wouldn't uh, like, 
plan on that, but there's a chance, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, let's hope there wasn't any last second additions, but I do want to kind of move on. We're going to get to more golf talk later. Um, I just want to start with something that's really just been, I mean, really pissing me off lately, to be quite honest with you. So it's a big pet peeve of mine, and I want to get your guys' thoughts on it. Toilet handles. And I know Costo dealt with it as well in our apartment in Bozeman. And mine is now (laughs) kind of start. It started early stages of acting up to the point where it's just about to fall off, where you give it the old flush and the tank keeps running water through it. So you got the constant running water in the background and then you have to just go flick it a little bit and it goes right back to normal. Like that's annoying. they They just not make a toilet handle that just works properly ever in any house that I ever live in. I think, I think if you just tighten the chain on the little plunger thing on the top of the tank, I'm pretty sure that just solves your problem. Pretty sure. I'm not like, I'm not a dad, <laughs> so I can't promise that that's correct. But I know I'm pretty sure that that's the first thing. But if it's, you know how like every college house ever has had a fucked up toilet handle. Every college house oh. ever's toilet handle was not working properly. So it sometimes, yeah, it's just like the worst toilet like that the person could have bought 30 years ago. So it's like you started with something that wasn't supposed to last this long and it like it didn't last this long. So the button, yeah, the buttons, I don't I don't want to call them a button because it's a lever, but like all right. So let's let's bring up the Bozeman one, first of all horrible oh my god so when you're paying three grand for an apartment a month <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need and our all, toilets and work. all all of the toilets it, it happened to both of them is a two bedroom or a, yeah two bedroom two bath and the fuckers all of them broke well yeah i mean it wasn't Every single one. we put in a word they did too it wasn't to the point where they just like did the annoying thing that mine's doing right now where it like you flush it and then it just doesn't hit right and the water keeps going you have to flick it it got to the point in bozeman where i mean we're talking a month in max where we just didn't have toilet handles anymore we didn't have flushers anymore we just had to open up the tank and pull the fucking the chain that's brutal yeah that's yeah that goes back to your point too paulie i've tried i tried everything in the book to fix it even put (laughs) in a work order which they're like oh yeah like our maintenance team is great this and that yada 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 and they just never showed up i was just like all right then like what the fuck am i paying there's like a maintenance fee too for like them to be like ready at all times like at your at your disposal at all times like 24 7 and they just never came slumlords dude they're taking over the world horrible yeah Yeah. well dude that's the thing dude they like icon apartments shout out to them no free ads but like this is kind of a knock on them so this is like yeah, yeah, no, yeah we, can, we can yeah, do a free, deep dive on it. Free review. Let's go. Yeah, we can free do a deep review. Dive on yeah. it. No need to One go to star. Yelp if you ever move to Bozeman, Montana, or considering Icon Apartments. Um, just fucking, I'm putting them on blast, dude. Terrible, terrible place. Buy Danny's van and just live with the hole in the <laughs> yeah. squirrels. It's yep. probably a better, safer option. Yeah, no doubt about it. You can, uh, you know, take a poop in the woods and not have to worry about uh, pulling any toilet handles. So. Well, Rainer, that was like, it was kind that was a little bit of a provoking poly question. And so we can just kind of get into mind because yeah, let's go right there. I had, it was like a, sh- it was a shower thought for me, but I, what happened was I was, I was up, I think I was grabbing some cereal. So I opened the cabinet door and the cabinet, oh. like kind of, I like leave it open, but not all the way open and it closes itself. Right. Nothing like, I mean, it okay. just, it's like a fucking cabinet. It just closes. Right. And I said that, oh man, imagine if that was a ghost, like ghost that that's like, imagine if something's ghosty. Right. And my question for you guys is would aliens believe in ghosts? Oh, wow. Oh boy. Um, well, my first counter question while I'm racking my brain or anything are aliens ghosts no no aliens aren't ghosts but like if an alien came to earth why why like, do you say that what do you yeah proof? but well because they're not from <laughs> earth 
they're not from earth so like we're gonna say ghosts are people well because they're aliens they're from another planet that's the point of an extraterrestrial human being okay but my point is let's say that a ghost like an alien a group of aliens comes here and they're like oh yeah th- those people are ghost hunters and they would like laugh and say like what, what's a ghost right like a ghost something you can't see like that's that's not real yeah. but then like they would go to a place that's ghosty and then like what would an alien believe like would they believe in i think they would believe in ghosts you can't you can't not like be creeped out if you've had a ghosty thing happen like you just so yeah, here's my cool. first here's my here's my big thing on that i think aliens i mean once we do meet them and i do believe i mean if we don't meet them i believe humans will meet them at some point um I hope they don't, because if it ever turns dicey, like a Russian don't hold that against kind of us. dynamic, yeah, you know, like just, I, I, want I think the in general, I think they would hold it against us. I also want ghosts on our side in a fight against aliens, because I think they could be of use. I see. I disagree. I want aliens on our side rather than ghosts. And I think if we didn't, I think if we didn't tell aliens about ghosts and then they just like wiped us out and found out about them, they would be even more mad at like the few that are left. Yeah. I think, you know, just to add like a point, I think they're so technologically advanced. They would know by now, like if they could be real. Yeah, you're right. They could feel it. I mean, they'd be like, that's yeah, what I mean, but like yeah, if they could just problem. feel it, but that's what I mean. If you could just feel it and they're like, there's another person here, and we're like, oh yeah, those are just ghosts. They aren't real. They're old dead people. They would and, they were their head, would they believe you? Like their head would explode. No, that could be what's like keeping them from coming and seeing us right now. Like, hey, these people down on this planet Earth, they're nuts. Like they they've got dead people living alongside of them in all of their houses. That's true. What if what if like none of us believe in it enough? And that's why go or like aliens won't come is because they're like, there's too many ghosts down there, dude. These people are fucking yeah. nuts. They're just <laughs> like way too people, normalized these living with the go ghosts. Crazy. These people go nuts down there. We can't, <laughs> we can't go, do that. go hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that was just my question. I had a thought, you know, aliens do, do would aliens one. believe in ghosts? Because I think I think after some time they would have to. Like you would just You'd have to. You'd go to an Indian burial ground from way back in the day, and there's just like ghosty shit, a Civil War memorial. I mean, like that, there's just that something's gonna, you're gonna see it, and you're gonna be like, oh, I feel different. And then you'd be like, ghost. Yeah. Oh, man. Let me tell you just a quick little story. This will be like two seconds, but um, Old Miss had an old Confederate cemetery on its grounds in the school. You walk in there, man, you can like feel like just a weird, weird. Well, like i don't know if it's just like the mood because it's like an old like civil war cemetery but it's like i don't know i felt like something was there that's all i mean i i absolutely believe you that there was something there i can't agree yeah, with i that. went with my dad my dad was like listen we gotta get out of here <laughs> i was like all right <laughs> i i think we can all agree also i i do agree that you probably felt something i do believe in ghosts i'm a ghost believer i think i've seen a lot of it firsthand i think that would be a place for some very angry ghosts to be because i think we can all agree that bad stuff happens yeah There's civil war not shaky, not great way to, to die yeah that's not a great ghost no. cemetery yeah. to visit either like that's not a good place yeah that's that's the thing i'll give you a little backstory too it's like it's not like just normal it's like the kids that went to old miss and like i think like 95 percent of them died so they're just like off like the college one day and then they're just like yeah sorry boys you gotta suit up for suit up for battle and then like 95 or like five percent of them came back so wow like, yeah the school you you know off. Of all the cancel culture things that have happened in this world, like having a civil war memorial on your fucking campus doesn't quite seem like the greatest thing for like 2022's welcoming fucking committee. Yeah, I think they moved it by now. Uh, But yeah, yeah, I think I I, I do know for a fact that I mean, in Costa, you can go into more detail if we want, but Ole Miss has had their share of uh, civil war. Um. I, I don't know how to put this without getting our show canceled, but um, bad things happen in the Civil War that they're still celebrating possibly down there. 
Uh, no, no, it's all, they're all pretty open about it. It's not like celebration. It's just like, it's more of like just keeping the history there and like not erasing it. Cause it did like happen. And it's just for, see, yeah. I, that is a fair point. And that is where it like is, the confusion totally comes is. is like, where, where do you, where do you not talk about things, but like also talk about things in a non like hey remember like fucking three years ago when we were all blacked out partying for this and now we're all like that that was pretty that was bad that's like that's up. what like it turns into right like that's what it turns into and it's just like i don't know that oh man that's tough i hope i hope oktoberfest doesn't like come out as like this big fucked up party for the inevitable i mean i mean everything true, i, I think eventually will you know oh speaking of which boys we should go to the appleton Oktoberfest uh this october uh no i go to the lacrosse's Oktoberfest, and that's it that's just it that's the only one okay the well one. then let's all go i ain't busy all right let's do it all right, me well, in. a rainer uh, shooters yeah I mean, you, you would i mean junk fm would it, junk fm plays at Oktoberfest too so we could even see your guys and uh that might, yeah, we might have to book that one. Oh, fantastic. Maybe a little extra show on there, too, maybe. That could be. Could be a show or two. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, moving on, um, I do want to. Um, I did talk to Paulie about this earlier. Um, I have a big announcement to make. So every year, basically, since Tom Brady was a Patriot back in when I was a younger lad, we're talking Oh six, Oh seven through about 2010, 11 ish. I was a huge new England Patriots fan. Cause I love Tom Brady. Since then I've been looking for an NFL team to catch my eye. Um, I tried the whole Vikings deal. I never really fell in love with it. A couple of years ago, I tried the Bills deal, but I never felt completely emotionally attached because I was never able to get out there and experience a tailgate. But something happened to me last Tuesday night when I sat down on my couch and I turned on Hard Knocks for the first time. And I will be the first one to say, I've already ordered the jersey. I am the biggest Detroit Lions fan there is in the world. I, You know, I, I don't think I can argue with you because... You're one of now I can't now I, I gotta, I gotta pause because there's a guy who goes to every Detroit lions game and like paints his face and wears <laughs> like shoulder pads, which is fucking like a, di- a different level of weird. Um, See, I believe, which I believe be- he goes by the name. Of, I've done my research of the fans of the Detroit lions. I, I believe he goes by the name of Detroit Don. Okay. Well, I, I yeah. Detroit Don is a, <laughs> A pretty big fan, like probably a bigger fan of them than you're a fan of anything ever. Um, but with that comes, you are definitely still top 100 fans of D- Detroit Lions. Guaranteed. I think so. <laughs> which is disappointing. I would hope so. Which is disappointing. Well, I mean, yeah, like I like I said to you on the phone, I'm not mad that you picked the Lions. I don't care that you picked the Lions, but the show hard knocks has rules behind it. And it's that they can't have made the playoffs in the last two years, which is so good because it's the lions just haven't made true. the playoffs. And how long we did this on the phone. It's simply not true. The Colts made the playoffs a year before they were on hard knocks. The Dallas Cowboys were on hard knocks last season. They were in the playoffs. Come on. Yeah. I mean, I, we, whether or not, we can agree that there were teams that there were, are rules. I do know that there yeah, are rules. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and it says there's eligible HBO watch says there were only three teams eligible. So there's clearly a, a lot of rules that would go in because if you're going to tell me that Carolina Panthers, Detroit lions and New York jets, were all f- fighting for the spot to be on hard knocks. Well, Rainer, those are the fucking worst three teams in the like those are the those are the three least exciting teams in the entire league. You know what? You can say it all you want. And maybe before I saw this episode, I would have agreed with you. But after watching that first episode, I was about to run through a brick wall for this team. These guys are electric. Costo, you've seen it. You can chime in. 
What did you think of Hard Knocks oh, episode my. one, Detroit Lions? Still a Vikes fan through and through, but boy, oh boy, Dan Campbell, what a treat that is to watch. I don't know if you want to throw the clip of his opening statements. Like, I don't know if you can do that on here right now. But well, I mean, I mean, oh Gresco, Gresco would have to be in charge of that. So I think our fans are probably just going to have to go check it out on HBO, unfortunately, because I don't think Gresco is going to be just watch, in for us. <laughs> just watch like the first 30 seconds, like all the listeners, like just watch the thir- first 30 seconds of Dan Campbell's opening statements and you'll be ready to go. I think he and don't quote me that the, these are his exact words, but uh, I think he says he'll will go to battle with you. I don't care if you have just one ass cheek and three toes, something along those lines. Yeah, yeah one ass cheek and three toes, and I'll still kick your ass. Yeah, that's excellent. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But Costa was a Vikings fan. Brainer is a Lions Lions fan. Correct. Do. Does the podcast, can two-thirds of the podcast agree that the Lions will finish ahead of both the Vikings and the Packers? Are you a Packers fan, Paulie? Yeah. You're a Packers fan now? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, always have been. Always have. I mean, don't. What? not. I'm not much of a football guy, but always, uh, always have been. Oh. Ooh. I guess starting I with that. Amon, starting with Amon Green way back in the day. So yeah. you can't chirp my Lions fandom at all. I didn't pick the Lions this year, and it's not because of a TV show that they got on because they were the worst in the fucking league last year. So you know what? Yes, I can. I, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna quote the great Jamal Williams, the backup running back for the Detroit Lions. I'm starting to get up on my knowledge. Jamal Williams. I mean, fuck, where did he used to play? Former Packer, former Packer. Now he's in just a much better culture. Yeah, backup. Yeah, you're quote, right. But great culture, fucking backup. To quote Jamal Williams, if you want to piss like a puppy, stay on the porch and let the big dogs eat. And that's exactly what you guys are doing. You guys are pissing like puppies on the porch. And I'm out in the yard with the big dogs eating with the lions. Let's go. Lions aren't guys. dogs, but they could eat dogs. <laughs> they, I mean, I yeah, might get a pet lion. But nobody has answered the question. Costa, you think Vikings and Packers lose? I mean, like finish below the Lions? No, I don't Hard think so either. Say all I know is that all three will be going past the Chicago Bears. The Bears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Justin it, Fields is not it, and he's an absolute phony. It's going to be a tough year for the Bears. I think we can all kind of agree on that. I mean, Justin Fields, he is what he is. He might be something better. But at the end of the day, he's a Chicago Bears quarterback with zero talent around him. So he's going to struggle. I, I think Chicago deserves it. You don't like the city of Chicago. They no, I do like the city no, of Chicago. Actually, you know what? I'm kind of. I love the Chicago city of. Chi- no, kind of no, I like the city. I Black like Hawk the city of Chicago. I like the city of Chicago, but there's something about the Bears and the city of Chicago, and like the combination of the two that says, you know what? If they lose, if they have a losing season forever, oh, they will. just but like forever, then then I'm just like a happier person. Like uh, they're just the worst hats off to Chicago though. Best special teams player of all time. Devin Hester. What a player that guy was. That does check out. Yeah. Hester, yep. Hester, the molester. Yeah. Dude, he game. Yeah. He, 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 he literally invented <laughs> kick like punting out of bombs. <laughs> like, that, he, that was he really call, did that's change. what we call a joke as well i i'm not accusing devin hester of being any sort of he doesn't play for the cleveland browns so he's safe on that front yeah that's true yeah i, that's true. <laughs> I mean now we're that. getting weird but, but come on now. <laughs> yeah i mean yeah you shouldn't have gone there but you did and it is what it is and yeah but <laughs> oh, yes costa was right keep it in it's, it's, it's a very hard joke I mean, i'm not gonna edit it out so <laughs> It's fine. Well, no molest technically. I mean, it means He's to mo- pester or harass. <laughs> Fair enough. I uh, he I'll, I want to 
I, I don't want to go over the fact that you're right. Like Costo's <laughs> dead on that he was the best special teams player of all time. Oh, and if we no, want to talk about question. something, if we want to eat, maybe we should get away from this talk for a second. Dude, we yeah, were, yeah. We were taught in training camp that there is a difference between good and bad, different things. He a doctor, that, no he, less. He yeah, skipped by, that mod. He <laughs> skipped that module. <laughs> by a doctor, no less. No, but he he was an absolute electric factor. Do you guys remember the Super Bowl against the was it the Colts? Right off the yeah. hop, he just returned opening kickoff. Like, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, he was so he was so good. And you want to know the most frustrating thing? And I, I I don't know if you guys went through it, but like he was never worth a shit in Madden games ever because he was like literally just a kick returner and it didn't matter who kick returned like at all. Like Devin Hester was the most useless player that was so good in real life. Like in real life, he was one of the most effective special teams. Guys. Like people gave up field position just so that he didn't score a touchdown right on them. And then in a video game, I don't even know if he ever played a down in a video game. Like they had him as like a fourth string cornerback and like just he didn't even play. Yeah, you had to put him in the line. You had to go. Yeah, the you literally had to go in and, and like select him yeah. up there. Yes. Yeah. His speed had to have been like 99, though. Oh, <laughs> like, dude. Dude. but like fo- football itself was so different then. I feel like it was like way more slow apart from like the guys who were quick. Where like now I feel like it's, this, it's I mean similar to the NHL of course where everything has speed has just been the one thing that everybody is you know working on, but I don't know I feel like the NFL used to be big and strong with like a couple guys that could really like book it around, and now we watch linemen that just like haul ass and they're not small yeah. guys, but those same guys would have been like four hundred pounds back in the day, and now they're running two seventy or two eighty. Well, yeah, I, would, I would think the biggest difference has to be quarterbacks, right? Like now all of a sudden we're seeing freaks like Patrick Mahomes, well, Lamar Jackson, yeah, like, and do all this I crazy would, shit. I would Josh Allen as well. I would Josh argue Allen running backs too. Miles though, but I would argue running backs as part of that too, is like there there's no Jerome Bettis in the league. And like uh what about like, your boy? You're, what about your boy in Green Bay? Are you talking Eddie Cheeseburger Lacey? No, because I'm such a I'm such a big Lions fan. I've done my pre scout for the year. If you're such a big Packers fan, you should be able to to name. I already the big said I'm not a big Packers fan, but I said that I've been a Packers fan for a long time. The big bully of a running back that you guys have right now, who's kind of still in that role, dude. Mr. There AJ is Dillon. no. He is AJ, a, kind oh. of, but he's like a split back with. He he's not, dude. Jerome Bettis, his nickname was the Boss. That is correct. Like, guess what his role was? It didn't, yeah, like, there was no, oh, A.J. Dillon kind of filled. No, fuck. It. Jerome Bettis' nickname was The Bus. You just gave him the ball, and he just ran motherfuckers over. And, like, Jerome Bettis would be probably more effective today than he was by the end of his career. Like, all things the same, right? And I'm just saying, based on, like, the, the way defenses play now, I think Jerome Bettis would just, like, run through defenses now. He, he was just so big that that's not what defenses play against anymore. <laughs> well, Derrick I mean, Henry, what, what's his what's his name? Isn't it like the tractor or something? But Derrick Henry <laughs> is the tractor, like, uh, right? And <laughs> Derrick Henry has like two highlight reels a year where he just runs over everybody on the field and scores. Yeah, and that's my great. point is like, but there's like, yeah, Derrick Henry's the closest, but Derrick Henry's still fast as shit. <laughs> yeah. Jerome, yeah, that's Jerome, why I think- Jerome Bettis was like a fullback that just got a lot more carries. True. Yeah. True. I mean, he was, he was a linebacker with the ball in his hand. <laughs> yeah, he, was, he, was. he was Ray. Yeah. He was Ray Lewis with rubber elbow guards. Well, now we're getting problematic again. God, well, fuck, we don't want to get problematic. Alleged, let's get off. The, let's get off. Let's get off the NFL if we don't want to be problematic because that entire <laughs> league is just waiting for fucking you guys, issues. You guys want to get into Deshaun Watson? <laughs> oh. Oh. You should. No, hear no, no should I don't. Heard, I've no. read way too many articles about the requests he's received from massage parlors. Very, very odd requests. Oh, 
I he he's an odd cat. There's there's not much else to say, but I, my Rainer, I'm glad. Nickname, my joke nickname for Devin Hester really does apply for Deshaun Watson. Let's just say that. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, no, I I'm glad that you picked, um, a team. I'm not gonna say a good team. A team in the worst city in in the league, which is another argument for another day. But, um, I'm no, glad. I'm glad I mean, you found come on. someone. Else. There's a there's a Cleveland in the league. You picked Columbus. Yeah, Columbus is way better than Cleveland. Both in Ohio. Just because they're in the same state doesn't have anything. Both to do in with Ohio it. and Detroit also has a hockey team. So like you you knew what Detroit was offering and you picked Columbus over it. Now you're gonna say Cleveland is just that much worse. I don't just because that. they're in the same state doesn't mean they're the same city. I don't want to hear that. I mean, I'm glad you found a team. Um, Costo, you. I appreciate you coming on this week on short notice. Um, you bet. We'll see. You know, we'll we'll probably have you back on now that your suspension's up and and it's not even the same program. So, um, yeah, Thank well, you. I would expect to see you on again. And uh, Rainer, sorry for closing you out, but I'm ready to to not to be doing this right now. So, sounds good. Good talking to you, boys. <laughs> yeah, All we'll right. talk. To you. Yeah, I lived a normal life until I started playing junior. Snoop the way from home and now my bill and mom's a cougar. My roommate is a beauty, please excuse my hockey humor. If you're quitting on your goals and dreams, you're probably a loser. I am deadly ass sewer and I'm here for the memories. Geno's apples, rarely getting penalties. Shout out to the fourth, I'm not producing all the energy. I've been a fucking beauty since I bought my first energy. The rookies in the league, I be showing them up. I was the first ever gong show flow of the month.